Hello, my name is Greg George, and this is uh, a, just a basic, quick demonstration of Geomagic Design X. Um, so there's lots of videos made out there about this product, but I wanted to do just like a fast, high-level one that gives you an idea of what this product is and what it's intended to do. So Geomagic Design X, as the name might infer, is it's a design software that's primarily designed to extract CAD models from scan data. So this is a scanned object that we that came from a 3D scanner. And as many people know, when they go into this uh, area, it's great to, that you can capture the shapes of these models. Um, but the type of model, this point cloud or polygon information that's captured from these types of scanners, uh, that type of data doesn't play well inside of uh, CAD packages like SOLIDWORKS because this is a bunch of vertices connected together into triangles. So we created uh, DesignX, which is essentially kind of like a basic CAD software to be able to extract the CAD model information from the scan data and get it over into the CAD uh, platform where most of the uh, design and uh, manufacturing takes place where you can make your drawings, your assemblies, even some CAM packages go from there. So in order to extract model information from this scan data here, the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and uh, model this flange here on the bottom. And in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch on that bottom plane. Now, one of the key pieces of functionality inside of Design X is not just the ability to create a sketch, but to create a mesh sketch. That's what we call it here, where you can intersect that sketch plane anywhere through the model, and it will project it back to the original location of the plane. You can cut multiple cross sections. You can even limit it to different regions of the model only. And it even does silhouetting, uh, which doesn't make sense for this part, but um, it's a really nice functionality. It can even do silhouettes around a rotational axis as well. So once I come in and I create my sketch, I can go ahead and hide the mesh. And you see that I have this uh, reference polyline in the background with all kinds of CAD sketching tools. Um, so I can actually just draw wherever I want to. I could sketch out a cross section that way, or I can actually window in on that cross section and best fit geometry to the data that's there. Um, I can even do that with uh, arcs as well. So if I come in here, I can say I want to best fit an arc to that area. Or I could do things like this tangent arc here where I can just draw wherever I want that uh, data to be. And you'll see right away the advantage here is I have the ability to create geometry and then move it like so. And then I can uh, go ahead and finish out the sketch where maybe I want to do a cross section here. And then I can trim stuff. I'll come over and do a corner trim between there. Actually trim all of this stuff and do a corner trim. And you see that I kind of roughed in this cross section pretty quick. And then I can say I want to select that as a symmetry line and then mirror this stuff across that plane there. So now I went ahead and I modeled that cross section and I can get out of that sketch and turn on my mesh. And you see we modeled it in position directly over top of the scan data that's there. Now, just like we were saying earlier, this is a CAD package. So I can go ahead and take that um, cross section, that sketch, and I can go ahead and extrude that. And you can extrude it a blind distance like this, or I can even snap it to a vertice, or I can even uh, say up to a region of the mesh if I want to. In this case, I'm just going to do a blind extrude, and you'll see that we create that so I just quickly modeled that directly over top of that scan data. Now, it's really nice, but as you visually look at it, you'll see that it looks really close in some areas. Some areas it does not. Another key value that DesignX has is the ability to take that model and the scan data and calculate the deviation between the two objects. So while you're designing, I can stop after I modeled this uh, first flange and I can roll over with my mouse and you can see here that it's 
eight thousandths of an inch uh, here below. It's within one thou here, uh, within around ten thou. So I can make decisions here as to what I want to do. It looks like this top is kind of bowed from side to side. Um, so if I turn that off, if I wanted to, I could come in and go into that extrusion and just go ahead and subtract eight thou from it. So I could just say right there. And you'll see that it dropped down a little bit. I could turn on my deviation. I, I didn't have to turn it off, but look at, I was able to save myself some time and uh, I can modify the model on the fly while I'm designing. Um, it also allows you to quickly extract dimensions from the mesh. Um, for these fillets here, if I want to come over and add a fillet to this mesh, I can come over and click on the edge. And if I click this uh, magnifying glass, this will actually look at the underlying mesh and then kind of calculate what um, the radius is. And then I can come in and uh, type in what I want it to be, right? So I can override what it is and then make my own radius. Um, and then over here, I'll do it. I think this one is different. So I'm just gonna come in here and then hit calculate. Yeah, it looks like it's a little bigger. So instead of 0 0.303, whatever, I can go ahead and round and say, I wanna put that. Now you'll notice that we are a history-based CAD model. So if I wanted to make a change to that, I can double click on it and make a change and come back. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and just, just for the sake of me wanting to finish this, I'll, I'll go ahead and calculate this one. So 0.21, boom, we just made that change. So that is kind of like the foundational piece of functionality that um, allows you to create CAD models uh, from scan data by using that mesh sketch and then utilizing it to go ahead and model directly over top of the mesh. After doing that for a long time, we started to make tools more and more automated. So if I come over to this home tab, I have what we call wizards here. So I can actually select areas of the mesh and I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my regions. They're basically just selectable areas of the mesh. So I'm gonna turn on my regions so I can select the areas of the mesh a little faster. If I come over and I say, I want to do an extrusion wizard and select the cylindrical area and then tell the software, I want it to create a separate solid body here and just hit next. The software will automatically create a preview of a solid body that it calculated and modeled from that data that's there. So you can see that I was able to extract a cylindrical solid body from that area really fast and then I can use that to model. So if I turn off my mesh, you'll see that this is what I've modeled so far. So I can actually come in here now and I could offset that plane up a little bit and then come over to model, cut, select this guy as my tool, select this as my target, hit next, say I want to keep this, okay, and you'll see that we created that. Now for the other side, you'll notice that the mesh, if I go ahead and hide on the side, I can select that side region and I could come over to those same wizards and say I want to fit a surface primitive plane, 150 extension, the extended ratio. What it'll do is basically just show how far past the boundary of the area that it will extend the surface. And then it created a surface directly over top of that scanned mesh. So it fit that automatically to, to that area. I could do the same thing from here. I can say I want to cut, select that as my tool. This is my solid body, accept. And there we go, we were able to extract that. Now, as you can see, for this part, it's kind of rinse and repeat. I just model like I would inside of any CAD package. It's just that I'm extracting my measurements of what I want the shape of this part to be from the, from the polygon mesh. So one last piece of functionality that I wanted to show that DesignX does is it gives you the ability not only to do those 2D mesh sketches, but I can do a 3D mesh sketch directly over top of the scan data. So I can come in here and I can click directly on the mesh. You'll see that I'm sketching with 3D 
curves directly on the mesh here. So what that allows me to do is in reverse engineering extremely complicated parts, right? Where I would do a lot of surface modeling. This is very beneficial to be able to capture these organic shapes. Especially if I'm trying to design a part that mates up to something else. You know, a lot of manufacturing, you're making a piece that might fit on another manufactured object that somebody else created, right? Um, so I can actually draw this curve network on the surface of the mesh, and then I can come in and I can say, I want to fit a surface patch inside using this boundary fit surface tool. I could say, go ahead and fit a surface to that area and trim it to the curves that I drew on the surface of the mesh. Now you'll see if I go ahead and turn off the mesh and turn on the surfaces, that we fit a surface exactly to that area. So for this part, that's not necessary. This is a constant extrusion. I can model that a different way, but you could imagine if this was a very organic shape that it would capture that very organic shape and represent it and allow me to model that and create, to create a model um, that's very exact to what's there. So we're not going to go ahead and model this entire piece, but what I do want to show is probably one of the most critical pieces of functionality outside of the mesh sketch tool is the ability, once I model all this inside of Design X, is to go ahead and send this over to whatever CAD package you're working with. So in this instance, um, I'm going to send it to SolidWorks, but we can send this history tree over the, the full model history tree over to SolidWorks, Creo, Inventor, and X. And then for AutoCAD, it sends it over as AutoCAD objects, which some elements of them are editable. Solid Edge is a direct modeler, so it sends it over there as a dumb solid, but Solid Edge can edit almost anything about it. And then actually the same thing goes for Katia. It'll send it over as a Katia file that Katia can open with. And of course, that's a really powerful CAD package. It can edit almost anything about it anyway with direct modeling tools. So the idea here is I can go ahead and say I want to send this history tree over to SolidWorks, start from the first feature, and build everything over there as native entities. So as soon as I hit send, I'm going to go ahead and click over to SolidWorks. And you'll see SolidWorks had no part open. And what it's doing is it's like remote driving the software. It's going through and running all of the commands that I ran inside of DesignX over inside of SolidWorks. So what it's going ahead and doing is building that model over here inside of this environment. And you'll see if I go ahead and turn off the sketch and mesh, these things come in as editable objects. So if I come over to this extrusion and hit edit sketch, you'll see it takes me directly inside of the sketch. And I could go ahead and override the dimensions in here. I could also dimension that inside of Design X, those dimensions, constraints, and relations all come across to uh, SolidWorks. If you added them, as you can see, this reference geometry is there. Um, but it all comes across to SolidWorks as native editable models. So then from here, you would take this model and continue through your manufacturing process by, you know, creating drawings, assemblies, uh, maybe even taking over to the CAM, uh, SolidWorks CAM, as you can see right here, um, in order to cut that part. So that's up to you. But really what DesignX is doing is bridging that gap between 3D scanners or any sort of device that captures polygon data um, and bringing that into our package and extracting CAD model surfaces, NURB surfaces, and getting them over to the CAD environment so you can actually create something from it and even make changes to it very easily. Um, so that is the kind of a basic overview of Geomagic Design X.